Hi, everyone. It's Pastor Eric, Tuesday of Holy Week, and we have our extended devotions for Holy Week. want to introduce, many of you have met and know Peter Grant. He is one of our elders here at Springs Community Church. Veda Riley, our prophetic uh, stream leader, and Natalie Youngner, uh, our director of operations. So we are looking at the story of the Last Supper. Pete, would you read that to us? We're uh, going to be reading in Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 7. If you have a chance, pause the video and grab your Bible. Okay, starting at verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it for it? They asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house at, that he enters and say to the owners of the house. The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. Thanks, Pete. What sticks out to you? Observations. I, I like that, uh, you know, that when the disciples... Uh, went and found things just as Jesus had told them they would find it. And, you know, I, I just think, you know, he did that with so many things, but just telling them they find a man carrying a jar of water and, and follow him. And, you know, even though there was nothing, no words exchanged for a while, uh, you know, until they followed him and, and then they found the place. So just the, I guess, just the details that Jesus went to, um, to make this um, just kind of an intimate time uh, with his last supper with the disciples. The, the providence of the Lord, he, he had all, all of these crucial details mm -hmm. in this sacred moment uh, there. Yeah, neat, good. I think for me, verse 15 really stands out. Uh, Jesus says to the disciples, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And, you know, he obviously knew what was about to unfold, but at the, at the very basic level, he was excited to hang out with his friends. And I think we can all really relate to that right now. Um, yeah. But again, just those glimpses of Jesus' humanness, of um, wanting to be with those closest to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wasn't eagerly desiring the suffering. No. He was eagerly desiring the community and a fellowship yeah good i think verse 16 right after that sticks out to me i know that's a shock to no one <laughs> the, the kingdom of god referenced both of those intriguing what does it mean i will not eat again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of god pete what sticks out to you uh, the, actually, the next verse, in verse 17, there's one thing that stuck out. It's about the take and divide it among you. 
-hmm. not share it, but divide it. I think that's a very key word in there that uh, that's showing equality among all of them. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and, and I think that's something that's a, a gift that Jesus has given the disciples. They may not have picked up on it at that very moment. Huh. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, uh, Veda, would you walk us through the, the station that we had last year for Stations of the Cross? Sure. Um, our goal was to, um, you know, we prayed over these scriptures just just to see what the Lord felt was important for us to bring out. And, you know, we wanted to um, put together something that would be portray, you know, the last time Jesus would be reclining with his friends, um, like Natalie said. Um, and we wanted to focus on the intimacy of the setting. Um, you know, it was a small upper room and they were gathered together and it may have been crowded with 13 of them. Um, but just, you know, just a comfortable place where they shared the Passover over, over meal together. Um, we wanted to have a basket of unleavened bread mm -hmm. and a, a goblet of wine. It's really great juice. But, you know, we wanted to, to really just have those things there that would take us back to that place in scripture and remind us. And, you know, it's kind of also in an invitation to recline with Jesus in this moment and just reflect on just how heavy that evening may have been mm -hmm. uh, in a beautiful way and then all of a sudden turned heavy in a in a different way when maybe they all of a sudden had an aha moment well gosh what is he saying that he's not going to be with us anymore and you know all of those things but so we wanted to have, you know, at that time, he also washed the disciples' feet. Um, you know, he wanted to make sure that they knew they were no, um, you know, the, the master is no greater than the servant. And he wanted to um, just wash all of their feet and have them go out and, you know, for preparation for after um, his resurrection. So, yeah, we had yeah, all so of the things. Such a beautiful uh, station. Yeah. And I think it makes me think of uh, including that with the passage, this moment of intimacy, Jesus was desirous of this. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, uh, the washing of the feet, the sharing of the meal, and then Judas, mm -hmm. the, the depth of betrayal and the contrast with that. What a, what a moment, uh, how amazing that is. Yeah. What are some applications that we perhaps could draw from this? I was thinking of the, um, the phrase new covenant that Jesus says. This is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. When you think about when that phrase new covenant is shared by Jesus, probably again, the disciples are not getting a whole lot of what Jesus is teaching uh, mm -hmm. until they would read it late in a later gospel. But um, for us, when you think of that new covenant that Jesus is establishing in the Passover or the Last Supper, what do you think of when you think of new covenant? Well, I think about how his blood covers all, but even to step back a little bit that, you know, just the, the gravity of what it meant that his body took upon all of our sin, all of our sin in the garden and in the cross. Oh my gosh. You know, it just, you just reflect on that, that unless he did these things, there's no way we could enter before the Lord. So you just can't imagine for me, I can't imagine the depth of the love that he has for us, mm -hmm. that God became man and then took upon the sin of the world, not just those that were living at that time, but all those that lived before him, all of us that have come after and still to come. I can't imagine the gravity of that sin. Yeah. No more temple system, no more sacrifice of animals, uh, none of that. Good. What else? Uh, New Covenant, Pete and Natalie, when you think about that. 
I, I, th I think we're seeing the fulfillment of Jeremiah, but I think even more importantly, in Jeremiah 31, it talks about that, you know, everybody gets, gets back to being equal, and it's reflected back in Joel uh, 2.28 also, where it says, you know, that's the, uh, everybody gets to play because everybody gets a part of the new kingdom. And I think the, uh, I, th I think that's something that we tend to miss out on that I think would be really great to, to have us for the future is, is to go back and really read those. I mean, we have the quiet time now. Go back and really read those and see how that applies to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, those are profound, important passages that are key to no new co covenant living. living. We, we're given a new heart, a new spirit. Everyone is given the spirit of God. All of us are temples uh, of the Lord, dwelling places. So it's not just the leadership of Israel that gets to walk in intimacy with God, but each and every one, women and men and children, get to walk in intimacy with God. Huge part of the new covenant, absolutely. Mm. Natalie, anything on that new covenant? I I think just about how how the disciples would have heard that language and you know and and being Jews and knowing what what the covenant was with God and and what that meant and then all of a sudden um Jesus is talking about a new covenant and you've seen him do amazing things um but but just how radical language like that would have been and um I think for us today we pretty easily take that for granted and you know and we don't hear it with that same radical uh, perspective that they would have heard it. And, and so maybe just this Holy Week that, um, that it becomes a radical thing in our lives. Yeah. And this is a cliche, but sometimes cliches are cliches because they're important and meaningful. But there is a, in my mind, a profound sense of new covenant of moving from a focus on the rituals of the faith into the everyone gets a relationship with the Lord that doesn't render all rituals uh, mm -hmm. in, insignificant, but it does uh, open up the, the curtain, uh, you know, yeah. to the Holy of Holies is ripped. So we get to enter in on a daily basis in our connection with the Lord, that's new covenant living. And uh, to, I think sometimes we take that for granted. Uh, and especially in times like today, especially in Holy Week, we should be entering through that curtain and connecting with the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, can we pray together in response to these reflections mm -hmm. of Luke 22? Let's pray as you feel led. So, Father, I thank you for this, uh, this passage. There is so much life in it. There is so much to our future in here that we all get to play. And this is important to us right now. So I do, I do so cherish actually the times that we have right now that are quiet times in our lives, quiet times at our house that are just, that are, yes, they're forced upon us right now, but they are precious and they are your, and this is your time. Yes. So we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for the time to share with our families. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I pray for um, a fresh enlightenment of what this truly means. And I pray, Father, that you would pierce our heart with exactly what you were saying to the disciples at that time and help us have a fresh understanding of just how awesome this is in the greatest sense of the word. Mm -hmm. Father, I just thank you for your sacrifice upon the cross. I thank you for making a way for all of us. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I'm just struck by the fact that we're still celebrating the supper uh, all these centuries later, um, Lord, and, and the impact that you have on our lives on a daily basis. And um, 
and it all started in a little room upstairs, God. And so Jesus, I thank you for how you, um, you knit together the story to change the world and to change our lives and the opportunity to mm -hmm. remember and reflect on it this Holy Week. And Lord, we're mindful that someday we will celebrate uh, uh, the Passover. We will celebrate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb mm -hmm. in eternity with you, Jesus. Uh, the hope of the Lord's Supper is incredible and amazing that someday you will return and restore everything. All, there will be no more pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, no more suffering, no more loss, mm -hmm. Lord, but you will restore all things, Lord God. Thank you. We love you for the promise and the hope that you give us. And it's in your precious and powerful name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Very meaningful. God bless.